So let's begin. So I'm super excited to uh, talk today at the API Days interface, and especially excited about one topic that I really care about, and that's API products, building API products to really um, that really customers love, and also your organizations love, because that's um, mostly or often quite uh, forgotten. So, but uh, who am I? So my name is Amantio. I'm the co-author of API Product Management, and that was or well, let's say the backstory, it was kind of a need because several years ago we started with the, we had the mandate to uh, create business value with APIs and then we uncovered slowly our API products, but there was no approach how to approach API as a product. So we had to do a lot of research, a lot of reading, and then we somehow developed uh, some methods and tools that helped us to create successful API products and that's why we share also our insights and collaborate on it with, uh, with, uh, with the API community, right? And I also work as a principal IT consultant, uh, helping uh, organizations with all APIs or API products, and besides that, also with uh, machine learning and sorts of things. And I also advise API-first startups, some of them. And since last Friday, I'm also a homeowner of a condo, and that brings me uh, to this to what happened to me on Saturday, what I experienced there, which has uh, relates to API products. So um, we have a new condo. We are going to move, and we need to yeah organize all the stuff. Needs new furniture. So last Saturday we went to it IKEA, um, and that's something or uh, a place that I really love because it gives a lot of inspiration how to uh, fill in the rooms. Right. And what I, we really looked for was yeah organize our cellar, all the stuff, put it there organize, uh, being organized, and also still getting uh, or access those things. And we uh, visited almost five furniture stores, and usually it looks like this. So uh, just some stairs or so some chairs, some furniture, one by one. And that's what uh, the furniture stores, how they present the furniture. IKEA does it a little bit different. So what they really showed me is not only just furniture, but really in a context. So what you see here is really what I was looking for, shelves to be really for to become organized. And that's what IKEA does, really presents what you can become. And I see here clearly, okay, I have some, some storages, some, some shelves, and I can really also access it. You can't imagine how, my, how many times I just buy the same tools over and over again, put it somewhere, it's out of sight, forgotten, so I have to buy it uh, another time. So this will help me. Also, a table which you can lift up. If you don't need it, lift it down. If you need a workplace, so the, my wife or me, we can repair stuff, create our own furniture, and so on and so on. And that's what most companies actually do. It's really, they just try to sell the thing. And if you uh, know the, the, the computer game Super Mario, and you happen to find a, a fire flower, uh, why do you need to, to catch a fire flower? And because it's just a thousand points, but it doesn't help you to, to, to save the princess, right? And that's actually what the customers buy. They don't buy the thing, they really buy what they become. And with the fire flower, you become the fire super Mario. That means you can kill enemies without risking your life, so that makes it easier to save the princess in the end. And what's the API here in this game? So the API, and that's really an important idea, is really the interface to really access this value proposition. So the interface to, to shoot the balls to the enemies. And that's really a basic idea uh, or basic fundamental idea for API products. So the API is not the interface to backend or exposing backends. It's really about the interface to value proposition. So now you might uh, ask, okay, what is an API product then if it's just an interface to value proposition? So it's the complete package. So an API product is really about a digital product offered as a service because you can't just package an API, install it somewhere at the customer. You really have to provide it as a service with SLAs, with availability, and all these kind of things. And also it needs to provide value to a certain group of people. That's your customers. But also, don't forget, it needs also to provide value to the organization. Because if it doesn't provide value, then it's just a, a waste of money and the, the organization should uh, invest their resources to uh, somewhere else. That's the basic principle of API product management. So you have really these three, three things. Um, I mean, API product management, in the end, it's product management. 
and it's about mitigating risks. So the risk of not building something what the customer wants, not building something that helps the organization. So no uh, uh, business value, no uh, direct or uh, indirect uh, monetization, and also something that you can't even build. And I think in this conference, there's a lot of talk about uh, the feasibility, how you can build better APIs in a better way. So I will talk about the first two things. So how to find really desirable API products and how to make sure that also your organization loves them because it provides the right value um, to the organization. So let's start with the first thing, the desirability or does the customer really want it? And here I want to show you um, one project that was involved last year uh, for an NGO. So the NGO here provides an assisted transport to people in need. So for instance, elderly people who can't use a public transport or who have a broken leg, can't use public transport or taxis to, to cumbersome to get to the medical appointment and uh, to get healing. So um, these customers, they call the, the NGO uh, to get the driver that will uh, and drive them to the medical appointment or to the doctor. And the association will coordinate the volunteers, define okay, who of the volunteers will uh, drive uh, this customer. And then the driver will drive the, the customer to the doctor. And then he has to fill out the report. That means, okay, how, was, how much was the distance uh, from the customer's home to the doctor and back again, how much time it, uh, it costed to get just reimbursement, for instance, for, for gasoline, because they don't get a payment, they got just reimbursement for their expenses. And then the, uh, the association takes all these reports, puts it into, a, uh, yeah, into an application system uh, just for the financial and booking uh, stuff, which is then uh, provided by the, by the agency, agency. So that agency is providing this, uh, this application. And um, we wanted to improve this, uh, uh, this whole thing. And we did a design sprint to really identify the key pain points. And what we found out is the drivers, they have to fill out several forms, depending if the customer is paying cash or the customer is uh, uh, paying by a bill. And they have to collect all the reports for all the transport or drives they are doing and then send it to the, to the association uh, each month. And there, of course, these employees are over flooded with uh, reports. They have to fill it into the system manually. And this is also really pain point. So we wanted to improve that. And what we did was we provided or created a mobile app for the, for the drivers, which just uh, collected in background distance and also time used and submitted it automatically or entered in, it in automatically into, the, into this uh, uh, booking system uh, via API. So no report was needed. So the volunteers were happy because they just want to have a purpose, help people uh, in need. And also the association doesn't want to just to um, take reports, fill it into uh, a system. They want also to create value uh, to people in need. And we automated this process, so report was gone, and this created a really nice business value. But uh, um, we are also asked ourselves, can we do more? I mean, this is just about optimization of a, of a process. And interestingly, um, Uber Health uh, provides some quite inform uh, interesting information, like um, there are 3.6 million Americans who miss the medical appointments each year due to lack of reliable transportation. And that's a huge thing, such that Uber even has, a, has its own product. And uh, I just... Uh, um, did some, some number crunching. So how would that look like in Switzerland? So there are 3.6 million uh, uh, missed appointments in the US. In Switzerland, we have, uh, yeah, we have less population, but that means we have 85,000 uh, uh, missed appointments. And we, if we involve the cost of the medical doctor, we can say, okay, the health organization in Switzerland, they lose around 11.5 million each, each year because just of missed uh, appointments. That's an opportunity, opportunity actually. So we went back to the board, looked at the stakeholders, who thought, okay, Uber Health is uh, taking health organizations into account. That's also taking health organizations into account. What can we do then? So what if we can provide an API product to the health organizations with 
that they can order the, the drives or the transport for their patients. So we can, all of the time, we can charge completely new customers. So we got a new customer, a new market, and we can uh, uh, internally, we can uh, provide our service for free to the drivers and also the OCA's association. And also the patients, they don't have to um, order transport. It's really the, the health organizations who do all the organization and get the value because about this uh, 11.5 million uh, dollars. But just a disclaimer, this actually doesn't work in Switzerland. Uh, um, just for, for regulation purposes, also Swiss public transport is super reliable. So uh, uh, people in Switzerland even uh, um, <coughs> uh, shout out if, uh, if the transport is just one minute late. So it's uh, it's an uh, apocalyptic uh, situation if it's one minute late. So it's not really working in Switzerland, but probably in another country, who knows. Um, but this looks quite simple, right? You have the revenue model, so you have found a new customer, you identified an API product, but how do you get there? And um, what we um, found or research is a really nice value proposition canvas from Alex Osterwalder, which complements the business model canvas, and we adapted it or put it into the context of APIs, and that's what comes out. So we have on the right side, really the customer profile, so what does he want to get done? What are his problems? And on the left side, the value proposition interface map, which uh, um, represents our, our organizations, what assets do we have, and how can we provide value to the customer? And it's really about, how, not about filling uh, the canvas, just uh, isolated like a form. It's really about how these little uh, canvas really talk to each other and how they are connected. So you start typically with a, with a customer first, and uh, you see here the numbers. So who is the actual customer? And you see in the example before with the NGO, it completely changes the game depending on who you define as a customer. So uh, is it the NGO, the association, or is it the healthcare organization? And then the second step, you really go uh, towards the, the organizations. What are the assets that you can reuse and how you can you formulate the value proposition? Uh, and an API. And uh, let me just uh, do the, the example. So here, the customer profile. So what you have to do is um, identify the customer. Here you have to really uh, to be clear. Uh, and also, this is usually it's a quite a huge discussion if you do a workshop with several stakeholders, who is actually the customers. And uh, it's always a uh, discussion about customers and developers or developers' customers or are their users and so on. So what you have to do, you should just list the, uh, the stakeholders and show the revenue model, not in the sense who pays who, but how the values flow. So who provides value to whom, what does he get back? And then play around with that. You can also leverage uh, existing B2B uh, uh, partnerships or ecosystems to, to have a start. And then you identify the pains to get the jobs done. And you need really to validate those, uh, uh, those assumptions. If you don't validate, it's really not about product management because product management is really about validating things, mitigating the risks, so you know that you really build something that the customers really want. And then you go over to the value proposition interface map. There you start listing all the data sources, applications, business processes, third APIs, even internal APIs that you could potentially use to really create a value. Then you define the, uh, the pain relievers. How you, there you define how you want to, um, to relieve the pains of the customers and not um, what you want to do. So in the, in the, in the, in the case of the, of the NGO, so it was, um, so we defined as a customer, the healthcare organizations, they wanted or their job to get done was healing the patients during an appointment. And that problem was the, the patients don't show up or even delay the, the appointments of other, uh, of other customers. And what we have, uh, or what the NGO had, was really an assisted transport infrastructure. So a huge pool of volunteers with cars who are, uh, who are eager to help others and drive people to their medical appointments, and also a system where you can book and coordinate uh, this kind of transports. And what the value proposition of the healthcare organization could be, it was really like a, a ready to order 
patient transport. <clears throat> so that means the healthcare organizations get an API where they can order the transport. And that really changes uh, uh, the picture if you take just the association of cars because they're just caring about reports, about distances and time the drivers are uh, um, driving. But healthcare organizations, they want the transport ordered and really have it reliable. And then from this value proposition, having this patient transport, you can define or derive an API, in this case, transport API, which reflects somewhat the value proposition. And this looks yeah, maybe uh, quite simple. It's quite a simple example, but in real life, it really looks like this, if you are prepared. Um, so a lot of ideas about who actually the customers are, what are their pains, and then a huge list of potential assets that could be relevant, and then also uh, value propositions. And what in real life really happens is, um, first of all, you document what uh, the customer is and what their pain is. You can validate it. And you can really, from the value proposition, you can really identify, okay, what's actually a minimum viable product? Something that you can really build fast to create value to potential customer. And then build from there really the whole API product roadmap to really go from value proposition to value proposition to create even more value, provide more value to, to the customer. And then, for instance, the yellows, uh, yellow stickers, they were just the APIs that uh, you could uh, implement to, uh, to create or uh, um, realize those value propositions. So what this customer in, the, in this example really got was also a huge API portfolio that could put it into the roadmap, what they can build over the next period of time. So the, the VPI canvas really helps to validate the problem solutions bit really to find something that really customers really desire. And that's the first delivery of, of this talk. So building API products that customers really love. But what about API products that also organizations love? And here we come to the uh, second thing, viability. So should the organization actually build it? It could be that it provides value to customer, but it could be that it doesn't provide value to organizations. For instance, it's not on strategy, it's too costly, or not a, a core competence of the company. And what we uh, um, used or um, were inspired from the, the, the Lean Canvas, so we adopted it to, to an API product canvas. And here you see uh, uh, canvas like uh, who's actually the customer, the problem, what's the value proposition solution, and so on. And this is really now becoming after the problem solution fit, we go to the product market fit. So you try to um, evolve the problem solution fit into a product that really also creates value to the organization. And here it's really nice about the VPI cameras. So it really synergizes really well with API product cameras. So here the orange things, that's really what you can take from the VPI cameras. You can really fill it in there. So we can take over who's actually the customer, what are the problems or the pains, what is, are the pain relievers and the assets to formulate the value proposition, and the APIs are the, the solution. And then you have just to fill out the rest of the canvas. And uh, the next thing would be the business goals. And that's not actually the business goals of the API product itself in, in the sense of uh, just making money or monetize the API. So it's really about connecting the API product with a corporate strategy. So how can the API product really support the organization in strategy? And with that, you really show the benefit to the organizations, why you should really build it. And usually this is also gets the buy-in of the management to really get the money to build it. Or at least um, you get less resistance. <clears throat> then um, you uh, can fill in the, the, the key metrics, so the key KPIs. And here it's really important that, uh, um, I mean, there are a lot of um, nonsense KPIs like number of calls of APIs and so on. Here you have really to do a final KPI that really uh, reflects or represents how well you deliver on, the, on your value proposition. And in, in the sense or in the case of uh, this uh, um, transport management of the NGO, it's really about the number or the percentage of missed uh, appointments. So because the healthcare organization is about or is interested in uh, reducing the number of uh, missed appointments and you have 
somehow to measure it. And you have to, sometimes you have to be quite creative or make assumptions to really get out some certain uh, number or uh, a measurement. And the goal really is about, not about, uh, let's say, to get a bonus or something like that. So it's really about uh, the KPI should we really provide you information how you can improve the API product in the next iteration. <clears throat> and uh, as a takeaway, um, be like uh, IKEA. So use your assets and formulate with those assets value propositions. And for that, you have really to first understand why is the customer coming to you? What is he really searching? So in the case of IKEA and me, I was looking for uh, to be, become organized in the seller that I can put my stuff, but also I find it really easy. And IKEA showed me what they can provide to me to really organize my seller in my in my new condo. And there's a basic, uh, really fundamental idea that you have to see APIs not just as about about exposing um, backend applications. So it's really about exposing uh, value propositions. So I mean, you can build systems API that connect uh, backends. You can build process APIs to um, make uh, um, process or business process of your organization accessible, but then create APIs that are really an interface to value proposition. Value proposition. And that's really what uh, an API product in the end uh, can become. And then as a second uh, takeaway, so API products is really um, a digital product offered as a service that provides value to, uh, to a group of people and your organizations. You are, so you have to really to make this kind of connection between something that creates value to customer and also uh, the benefits for the organization. And then as a, the VPI canvas, it's really a tool to really to help you um, to find this problem solution fit to help you really to find an API product that is desirable. And the API product canvas is something that helps you really to uh, um, connect it to the corporate strategy. So with the business goals also um, to communicate it within the organizations, um, why you should build it and why, why it's really relevant for the organization. So really kind of a communication instrument. And you call, uh, repeat it over and over again, uh, iterate on it to even create more value. And that's the whole thing about building API products that uh, customers and your organizations love. Thank you very much, Amancio. In 30 seconds before the next speaker, maybe question we've seen, uh, should we treat all APIs as product in our organization, even if we have hundreds? Um, there are specific benefits if you treat everything as a, uh, as a product, because um, you don't just create APIs because uh, in the past, you always thought, okay, let's build it, let's build APIs, and people will use it. Usually that doesn't happen. So think about who can use it, who is interested in it, and then build it with these customers in mind. So internally, also as externally. Thank you very much, Amancio, for this question.